Marnie, I think, was the one who had written originally and said, I love panel quilts, but I have no clue what to quilt on them. <laughs> so she kind of mm -hmm. started this whole thing. So I, I want to say, Marnie, this is all your fault, but I am just having way too much fun with this. So, <laughs> so, um, so these are some photos that she had sent, and I kind of grouped them together um, because what I'm, what I'm suspecting or what I'm hoping is that, like these two, what would that be? The middle one and the one on the right are the panels that you have, and the photo that's on the left is the pattern you're going to eventually make it into. Right. Okay, do you want to say anything about this before we kind of dive into this? No, just that, that this particular pattern was uh, a 2018 pattern by Northcott and the uh, Stonehenge fabrics. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, I love the fabrics. I'll just go ahead and order them wrong. Uh, <laughs> trying to get those things that are outdated. And of course, they only yeah. print them one, up one time is, is like trying to pull teeth. I've ordered fabric all the way from England to get this uh together so go ahead yeah I, they're beautiful panels absolutely absolutely gorgeous mm -hmm. and um so you have the two in the two different colorways then right right yeah okay so what i did is okay so anybody have any idea on how to how how you would quilt this if this was in a quilt whether yours or a customer's um, this is Palma. Um, okay. I usually highlight, like in this, I would do the veins. I would mm -hmm. outline the leaves um, <clears throat> on the background. Probably in this, I would do um, vertical lines because you want the leaves and everything to stand out. I see a branch there that I would outline and maybe add some texture. A lot of, I think, thread painting, I guess, for... yeah. Uh, yeah, and the bird I would definitely outline and add some texture to him. The mm -hmm. seed pods definitely need to be outlined and texturized. Mm -hmm. um, but the background would just be a simple, very, very simple design because you want yeah. stuff to show. And actually, I have another one here. This is um, it's a little bit I, I did some cropping of it and tried to enlarge it a little bit so that you could see it a little bit better. And actually, it wasn't until I was just looking at it right now. Um, looking at these guys here that I realized that the texture in the back, I'm almost thinking kind of almost like a wood grain. I like your idea of the vertical lines, right. but I'm almost thinking like a wood grain pattern because then way it looks like they're kind of up against a tree trunk or something. And mm -hmm. I think that would work with that too. So, but, but as you, far as, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, Palma, thank you for the suggestions. Would you be changing the threads, like say for the leaves, would you do it in like a, a pretty orange or dark brown or, and yeah. like with the seed pods, white, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. What Cindy has done for her sunflower, um, she used um, a high sheen or even metallic in the gold veins of the leaves. And that would look beautiful. Uh, possibly even the, the, the high high sheen polyester for the seed pods yeah yeah so I, I hadn't even thought about the hot high sheen polyester but that would that would work and yeah if i was quilting this i would be changing my thread all over the place with this yeah. absolutely absolutely there's just no way that you could quilt that with just one color or thread for the bark bark ish whatever um it would really look cool for maybe two or three colors of browns Mm -hmm. um and overlapping each other to get that bark effect yeah Again. yeah and um okay so i got this into the pen mode and this just does not let me do a real 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 detailed job but and actually with some of these uh colors here i'd almost look to see if i could find a variegated thread that had a bunch of like the browns and beiges and stuff and just go in here and i just kind of outlined those veins a little bit just kind of follow the pattern. Um, I don't know exactly how big they are. You might put some of these little side veins in there as you're, as you're quilting. Um, you don't necessarily have to outline the whole leaf, although you certainly can. Let's just go in here. And then I would change my color thread. So what I would do is, okay, so whatever color thread this is, then I would come in and I would do 
you know, all, all the leaves here, you know, and actually you could probably move from one to the other, depending on, you know, where you start and everything else and the size of your workspace. Same thing up here with these leaves here. Uh, put a, the, the, a lighter color in for the seed pods and maybe do a little circle and a little wing or something. Mm -hmm. Of course, the cursor doesn't want to do what I want it to do, but you know, you kind of get the idea. And sometimes, better. sometimes like here, you might even be able to kind of find something in the in the design that you can just kind of sneak around and kind of get into the next one. So you don't have to cut mm -hmm. your thread all the time and stuff. And I don't know, I'm, I didn't, I'm not seeing it on this photo, but I am saw it on the other one where this one was kind of, you might kind of look like a little pebbly. So you might even want to do some little pebbles in there. I don't know how many of those I'd want to do, but you know, something or something textury to give it that texture and just fill in with what's, what's already on the, on the uh, printing, you know, what's on the design. And let's just go here just for kicks with, with uh, Palma with her vertical lines, whoops. And I'd probably do wavy lines because I'm not a huge fan of straight lines on this. And then mm -hmm. I'm thinking like with the wood grain, which of course I'm not probably not gonna be able to, to draw, but oops. Forget. You know, kind of avoiding the other leaves and stuff and, you know, just, just having fun with it. So Cindy, now you've got all that background light and darker gold. So, uh -huh. or that's it. You put some pebbles in that, but well, um, pebbles or so, something texture, tiny stipple or something, something. a little, yeah. little, or or this might be little ease or, or yeah, or something. Um, I want to say, and mm -hmm. I'm going to use the word okay. very loosely, micro stippling. I don't know if I would do teeny, teeny, mm -hmm. teeny, tiny stippling, but not right. your normal size stippling or you know something like that but something a little tighter just because or anything else what with some of these panels looks like mm -hmm. anything goes as long as it's mm -hmm. kind of the colors are kind of the same ish and mm -hmm. uh, you're following what's already printed on the on the um, mm -hmm. panel it's a beautiful fabric yeah oh. it's gorgeous i just saw yeah. something um, yeah i really like the um, if leaves out into the border mm -hmm. uh yeah yeah okay uh let's see palma what were you going to say i just went to a, a workshop um i think it was a month ago and she uh, you may not be able to do this um she actually bought two or three panels of the same thing and she would mm -hmm. cut fussy cut like say like the bird she would fussy cut a bird and make it um trapunto and oh. then put it over the bird so the bird really popped out. Right. Wow. So, mm. you know. Wow. Future knowledge. Future knowledge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then just kind of going back to the, the, um, the pattern here, you may not be able to find exactly the same fabrics, but you could probably re recreate. I mean, those are just little um basic right. leaves and you might maybe not put them all the way around but maybe put something like that in each corner and use other fabric just to 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 get it done yeah i was fortunate enough to get that fabric oh you um, were only, yeah like i said i ordered all the way from canada england everything wow. I, I put out i just did a search i thought you know what if it was any other pattern you could substitute and this and that but yeah i just like the look yeah of that. and um i got most probably 90 percent of the fabric and uh people are so willing to like north northcott when you go online and y you have a particular um uh, group or what do they call it collection mm -hmm. of fabrics that somebody has designed they'll let you go in and and whatever state it'll allow you to go in and say okay for these fabrics these particular quilt stores bought this fabric oh. and so i was able very easily to email them and ask them if possibly they would have any of that fabric mm -hmm. so that's how i got a lot of them but northcott really made a quick uh streamline process to to look for the fabric oh cool I didn't. Yeah. I never knew that. So yeah, it, okay. it was cool. Yeah.
Okay, so let's let's go on because Marty sent several um, se several things here. So um, again, I'm assuming these are photos of the pattern. The one on the left is a oh, well, yeah, they're the photo. The one on the left is a photo of the pattern. One on the right is the actual panel. Oh, okay. I couldn't I could I couldn't tell if that was already pieced oh. or so. This is pieced and ready for quilting then. Uh, if I wanted to quilt it that way, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. And I don't think, no. oh yeah, I did. Okay. So I made a, uh, I have no idea what that black line is. So I'm assuming it's it might've been a fold. It might have been a fold. Oh, okay. In the yeah. yeah. And it might've been something when I was doing cropping, manipulating and the oh, other okay. stuff too there. So, um, and now that I'm looking at it, I think I know what happened. It was my fault. So, oh, well, but, okay. um, but anybody got any ideas? Looks like the same type concept, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I would, I would do exactly the same thing that we did with the birds, but just change it for for this. Right. Um, um, so just for what I would do is I would get like a dark black or a very um, uh, like a variegated dark <clears throat> dark gray to black or something, and I just come in here and I just kind of start outlining and putting some planks of wood in there and just kind of going to town with it right and actually you might even um there's a couple of uh what uh, there's a <clears throat> excuse me there's a variegated thread the signature has a variegated thread that's really almost very dark dark dusty purples it's not oh. a purple purple but it's kind of a gray purple and I think that would be amazing in here. And yeah. you just kind of have fun with the texture. And then when you come out to the trees, again, kind of like how we did with the branches and maybe even come in here and just do some whatevers just to kind of kind of accentuate that feeling of the trees and the branches overlapping and stuff. Um, you may even get some a metallic thread or something and maybe even just outline the moon and whether or not you would want to do, <clears throat> excuse me, um, curves or circles or something in there, that's kind of up to you. Um, maybe some gray outline the, the clouds, put some texture in the clouds. And this, <clears throat> now just looking at this, I didn't see this before, but uh, looking at this right now, I'd almost be tempted to put, let's say if we're going to do the clouds, put some gray in first, quilt the clouds on top of these little branches. Mm -hmm. And then when you go back in and you quilt the branches on top of the clouds, it looks like one's on top of the other. So it's kind of a double quilting technique. Like a dimensional. Like a dimensional thing. thing yeah. Oh, and I would maybe put some, eventually put some orange or something like that in there. And just, I would just kind of see if I could come in here and, you know, just do come some little swirls or circles on the, the pumpkins just to kind of get those kind of whatever. Right. And again, if you kind of kind of plan it a little bit, and I'm going to use that word plan real, real loosely, <laughs> um, you should probably be able to go from one to the other without having to change your thread too right. much and stuff and just get in here and just kind of have, again, have fun with it. Yeah. It depends on how detailed you want to get with it. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you can put a lot of detail in it, but sometimes even just by outlining all you have to do is maybe just like outline the barn, a couple mm -hmm. little things, a little bit of the trees, just enough to kind of hold it down, hold the, you know, hold everything together, but not enough to overwhelm it. And I think that would be phenomenal. I had, I had a thought um, because mm -hmm. uh, when I used to live down in Phoenix, uh, some of the stores they have are really posh and they'd have these like panel type fabric and people would quilt them uh and then mount them on what do they call them frame stretchers or oh yeah 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 and stretch, they, stretcher frames or something yeah, yeah yeah and they're absolutely gorgeous because it, it it looks like you something you've mounted on the wall but without an actual frame around it it's already mounted on a uh stretcher yeah, frame it, it's like a, a canvas yeah. like an artwork right. so it's, it's right. more artwork yeah. right right yeah. it was neat yeah it was yeah. really neat that's that's so cool trying, 
I'm trying to think, okay, how many of these do I really want to make a quilt <laughs> out of? And how many of these do I want to make a, a picture frame like out of? Um, so I, I got a little carried away. I think I have probably, when I went back, I checked over 20 panels of different yeah. things from horses, Western scenes, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like, okay, that's enough. Um, <laughs> So, but I'm looking I think when forward we, to we're this. all with you with that because I, 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 speaking for myself, I have got a bunch of panels. In fact, right. I got all. They're so beautiful. They yeah. are, and they nowadays they're doing all this digital printing, and you can get a lot of great detail yeah. on the panels. They're just absolutely phenomenal compared to even what they were printing five years ago. Exactly. So yeah. So okay, we've got a, a few more here. Uh, this is another one from Marnie, and um, so I'm assuming again this is your panel that you do have, and this is um, either that yeah. that I think is from the pattern, is it not? That's or from not? the pattern, yeah. and the okay. one on the right is the actual panel. Yeah, but so I, I'm not that quick. I haven't got them all stitched, <laughs> <laughs> and I That's do have okay. all the fabrics for that, so that one was yeah. easy to get. Yeah. But again, I don't know about anybody else, but I would do um, kind of the same thing and just kind of quilt what's what's there. Right. And again, oh, I, looking at the moon, there's a spider. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I try to do a spider web over the moon. Oh, that would be cool. Okay, let's let's, let's let me web. get a, a oh, let's see what's happening here. I want to get uh, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Can I make a suggestion? Sure. sure. Um, I was looking at the moon on the prior panel and which uh -huh. made me dash into my closet and dig out my art supplies because it, let's see if I can find the camera. Let's see. This okay. is um, Liquitex mm -hmm. soft body acrylic in uh -huh. iridescent white. Wow. Ooh. And it just gives a very soft sheen and it doesn't make the fabric hard. Really? Yeah. It's Liquitex so soft body acrylic iridescent white that would okay. be great on those moons yeah thank I, have, you. I would put that on after it was all quilted and all and ready for even probably after it's bound and you're kind of putting in some last little details right yeah, yeah. i never thought of the yeah. paint but the paint would be absolutely great yeah i've used it on some um moons that i did for wall hangings and it turned out nice cool gail gail when yes. you put that on is that kind of translucent? So like if you mm -hmm. put it on the moon where the trees are and everything, would that would that cover up the trees or would you be able it, it, to see? You'd still be able to see the trees, but okay. it would give them a sheen, like a shine. Okay. okay. Like they they look like they were glazed or had a pearl glaze on them or something like that. Yeah, I was just thinking about stitching back over that. Um, so I'd still have the glaze, but then I'd have the stitching for the trees on top of it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Cool. Yeah. I, <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to have to look for that. That, that liquid yeah, text. Liquid text. Liquid text. I've, yeah. I've just used regular um, acrylic paints when I've done mm -hmm. some painting on top of my quilts, but I, it, it's usually kind of more of a kindergarten type painting with getting everything kind of damp and then just putting the paint on and letting it go and stuff. So, mm -hmm. but oh, cool. But yeah, Lick. something like that. And and also Lois getting back to your idea about the the with the spider on top of that and just right. kind of doing the spider webs and stuff. Oh, that's great. Right. right. Yeah. These these I think these are ways that you can become really, really creative and just go for it. And even though it might not be quote unquote perfect, you know, what just just do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some and actually, beading might be fun on some of the eyes on the kitties and oh the yes, too. there That's, we go. Yeah, Doing that would be cool. And stuff, yeah. yeah. And actually, oh oh, I just thought of this. There, <laughs> <laughs> one thought leads to another. There is glow in the dark thread out there. Yeah, oh, right. And with right. this Halloween thought of mm -hmm. theme doing some quilting maybe the moon or maybe the 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 windows Window. here or something yeah. with some glow in the dark thread oh i think that would make a nice cute little touch the hardest thing would be to restrict myself so i didn't make it overdo it you know oh overdo it overdo <laughs> it have fun with it go for Early the gusto. Halloween once a year <laughs> yeah <laughs> There's no 
such thing as overdoing. Let me. <laughs> that's, that's the rumor I hear. Yes. <laughs> and then we've got a few more here. Um, in fact, oh. I think I have this panel in my oh, collection fine. too. Mm -hmm. So, and again, that's, mm -hmm. I'm assuming is the pattern for right. it. And then this is the panel mm -hmm. that you have, but just keeping with that same theme, boy, I'd get in here with some white or gray or some silver thread, just kind of outline, you know, around. And because these are all, all these colors are kind of the same, I think I would just cross them. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you can even, if you wanted to put a little bit of whatever detail kind of to make mm -hmm. it kind of look like uh, waves of um, snow. snow right. And then maybe come in here and do some outlining on the tree and oh and those lights wouldn't that be cool if you could make them so that they mm, like yeah. look like lights Lit up. well yeah. you know what we were just saying so, yeah. and i didn't think about this but yeah when you get that all finished you come in there and you put some beads on there on each one of those little lights right put a little bead on there Right. And actually with the beads, what I would probably do is I would probably just glue them on. Yeah. There's yeah. a couple of good, Those there's a couple of really good fabric glues. Cause when I was doing way back in the day, when I was doing bridal work, a lot of the beading that I did was all done with the glue. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Or how about little crystals? Little crystals. Yeah. 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 The crystal. oh. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Years ago, you used to be able to get the, the, what they call them, hot melt crystals. I don't know if they're still yeah. making them or not, mm. but something like that. Yeah, and then come in here with kind of a, a rusty red and kind of over, you know, I'm my line of stitching is going into the snow there. It's but, okay. Yeah. You know, quilting is a little different there when you're really running the machine. But, you know, do that and you could come in mm -hmm. here and do some little bit of detail here on the wood. Again, just kind of filling in, getting, getting more right. texture than right. anything else. Right. Yeah. Same thing, you could probably even just do, I don't know if I would do a ton of whatever in the trees, but just enough to kind of hold everything together and give it some texture. Mm -hmm. Oh, and sure. You could probably use a really light brown or maybe even a little beige Gray. or something in there just yeah. to kind of go for it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All oh, right. and, you're, and you sent the trains. Love the trains. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. Actually, had not seen those before ever, but. Um, this, I've had them for a while. My husband's a big train fan, and uh, so I bought them for him. And then I'm like, huh, it's one of those. Yeah, someday. But yeah. anyway, um, yeah, so I really love these trains. And I've got all the fabric, because when I got the panels, I bought all the fabric that I yeah. would need for these quilts. So I'm okay with them. Yeah. 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 yeah, but I would I would do exactly the same thing, you know, ma kind of match the thread a little bit. And, and, right. You know, just do enough that needs to be done. And you know. would would it, any of you uh, think that maybe Trapunto would be good on on any of these? You know, like yeah, putting extra underneath the like the train or something yeah. like that to kind of give it a lift. Yeah, you can do that. Yep, yeah, you you are the queen. <laughs> and if you want to do it, you go for it. Yeah, I was. That's what I was thinking. I just watched a video with Rob. What's his name? Rob Appella or something like that. Appella. Yeah. yeah, he was showing uh, his version of doing the panels, yeah. and it was interesting. He did a lot of trapunto on some of the panels. Yeah. Okay. Just back to this, Marnie. We've got another uh, train, train one, but again, kind of, I just kind of do the same thing. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay. <laughs> All of a sudden, it went real quiet. I thought, oh my gosh. <laughs> We're all muted. I, I, I kicked everybody <laughs> off. <laughs> well, if you keep yourself muted and then just hit the space bar, it allows you to talk when you need to talk and then okay. you can release. Okay. I didn't know about the space bar thing, so thank you. Okay. And then this one is from Bev. I love this panel. This panel is really nice. Okay. Anybody? Hit the space bar and unmute yourself. <laughs> 
Well, there's so many wonderful lines on that. And I, yeah, I could even see putting a few little snowflakes in the snowy edges. Yeah. Would Beautiful. definitely be painting on top of that. Mm. Yeah. With, yeah. I've got a series of not just the white, you know, don't stop. If you're going to buy one, you might as well get the whole set, right? Exactly. So I've got, I've got every iridescent that Liquitex makes in that soft body line. And uh -huh. I would definitely be painting on that before I quilted it, just to give it that, that shine and that sheen. I mean, the, look at, if that's ice or water, you know that shines. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I would definitely use a high sheen polyester thread on this, just to give you that little extra sparkle. Good idea, uh, Gail. Some raw edge applique. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, and I, you know, as far as the quilting, I would probably come in here and kind of go back and forth here a couple times and you can come down, make these look like icicles. Actually, and the other thing is I'm seeing some trees here in the back and get something where you can kind of just come in here mm -hmm. and just that's the world's worst drawing. And we've got the bird and everything else. Here's some more trees back here. Just a little bit of detail, just a, a hint to make that look like there's a little bit of a tree shape in there. Yeah, fun time. Cindy, look at the uh, water coming down and the it almost looks like bubbles in the Oops, water coming oh, down. Oh, wait, wait, wait a second. There we go. It, uh, oh, here, wouldn't, yeah. Wouldn't yeah. the little bubble circle things? Yeah look pretty really in that. That in there too yeah absolutely yeah the texture that you could do on here would just be absolutely amazing and yeah the thought of doing a couple of snowflakes i'm just going to kind of you know i'm thinking more i'd probably do them a little bit more towards the the edges but you know those are supposed to be snowflakes but mm -hmm. yeah you could have them all kind of piled up around the bottom or even a couple of up in the corners or something yeah Actually, I don't know how she's going to put this together, but if there's a border out here, let's say there's a border out here, I might even uh, take snowflakes and put them so that they're on both the border and the yeah. panel. Why not? I've done that many times where the pattern goes into the border. And of course, you'd have, you know, hopefully have the same thing over here with a couple snowflakes, maybe. Oops. Oh, keep, uh, ah, what did I just do? Ah, I hate when that happens. Hang on just a second, ladies. There we go. There we go. Okay, get the pen and then get back to here. Yeah, that would, that would be pretty. That was gorgeous. I want to see that. Bev, I want to see that finished one day. <laughs> And then we have a few more here from Pam. And um, and again, just kind of quilting what's there. And, um, you know, I would say with the deer, you know, just come in here and kind of give some shape to the, to the animal. Go around there. Depending on the color of thread you have, you could probably do all of that with, you know, one start and one stop. And Get into the next one and just there's a couple of really nice variegated light browns, light tans. Comment. Has Go. has anyone seen the thread? Is I think it's an embroidery thread, but you can use it um, on your quilting also, and you brush it with a small wire brush and it gets fuzzy like fur. Oh no, I haven't seen that one. I think I might have some. Let me go hunt in the closet. I'll be back. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, gosh. And then these panels here next to it, I'm not exactly sure how big they are or anything, but I was able to, let's see, here we go, kind of enlarge this and cropped it down. But again, this would be, this one would be way too much fun to quilt up, you know, with just all the little detail and you know, kind of sounding like <laughs> sounding like the broken record. You know, the they look like a little Kincaid bit trees. paintings. Yeah, and you know, coming in here and here and water. <sighs> well, you know what? Now that if we've got that iridescent paint on the brain, you could probably even put a little iridescent paint on there. 
and you know going up into the trees and such yep anybody else have any ideas on that we just spend lots of time on it yes you can you can it, it just looks to me like i want to be there yeah <laughs> That's true. That's true. Although I don't know. I think my camping days are over. <laughs> or maybe it's what they call it glamping where they have the fancy, you know, like cabins with the really nice king size beds and stuff. <laughs> yes. And your own butler and it's catered, right? That's right. I like there that. I like that. Yeah. And then I just got a few more water. here. <laughs> yeah hot and cold running water yeah i don't want to have to go down to the creek to dip the water been there done that don't want to go back but um and again here's a couple more that uh, pam had sent in and you know again kind of just keep them with the same thought you know outlining the dogs putting a little texture in texture on the trees over on the um, mailbox well i didn't even see the red cardinal there but yeah. um, you know red cardinal trees just you know having fun with it I think we've got one more. Here's what another that, one. Gail? Wow. This um this is the thread. Oh. Sulky puts it out. It's called Filane. It comes in a number of colors. This is just a beige. F I L E N E. How's it spelled? F I L A I N E. Okay. Put out by Sulky. F I L A I N E by yeah. Sulky. Right. So so you quilt with it and then you brush it yeah with this, with this little brush it's i have done okay. embroidery with this uh like cats and dogs and just like on their chest maybe a little okay. whisker and you brush it a little bit but this it looks really soft so but i think you can also use this in quilting i would definitely test it on a test bat you definitely yeah. have to change your uh, tension to do this, but I think you know, like doing the deer or some of these puppies here, something like this would look really nice on yeah. it. And then just give it a little brush. Okay, how how thick, how thick is the thread? Is it really thin, or is it thicker, or is it like a cotton weight or something? It's an it's an acrylic. Uh, da, 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 da. It doesn't give a weight. Wait a minute. Let me read the other part. Because. Because what I was thinking is maybe couching it in place, maybe putting two or three strands together or four strands Ooh, and then couching an it and then, yeah. then maybe brushing it. And that way you wouldn't have to worry about tension through your machine and stuff. Yeah. It does not tell me a weight, but it, it, looks, okay. it looks like maybe a 40 weight. Okay. It's not, so it's, it's not like, yeah, it's a little thicker than regular sewing thread. Okay. So it's not like it's a real heavy, thick yarn. No. Uh -uh. Okay. Oh, and where, did, anyway, where did you where did you get that from? Do you remember? Oh, I I think I got an email from Sulky. Okay. Um, and they had a sample embroidery piece, which a pattern for which I also downloaded, and I ordered some of the thread just to play with it. Okay. okay. But um, yeah, I think this this would be really neat on a on a especially if it's going to be something that's a wall hanging or something you're going to frame. Or even yeah. on, if you're doing a little Christmas stocking or something, you know? Yeah, something that's probably not going to get a lot of wear and tear on it and stuff. Right, so. right. Oh, cool. I like that. Actually, in my brain right now, I've got a couple different things I could use that on. <laughs> oh, wow. This is cool. This is good information here. Okay, I think, yeah, and then we've got one more photo here. Well, full, yeah, photo of a panel. And again, just like the other ones, just, you know, I would just have way too much fun with that. Love those reds. Yeah. And um, uh, Signature, Signature has a variegated thread called Citrus, which is bright yellows, bright oranges, and bright greens that I think would be really cool back here in some of this. Yeah. Cool. Great ideas, everybody. Hopefully that, um, I think that's the last one. I hope that inspires y'all. And um, Marnie, I hope that answers some of your questions. <laughs> yes, because originally I told Cindy I, I have a pantograph thing that I was going to use over the panel uh, with like translucent or invisible thread. 
um, just to give it texture, but without doing detail. I haven't tried it, so I don't know how it would look. It probably would. I might do it with a panel I really don't care about just to see how it looks. Just but to, yeah. otherwise, yeah. Yeah. And just just to, to kind of go back a little bit with, with the when you're quilting the panels and if you're going to be changing your thread a lot of times, um, the, I find that the easiest way to change the thread is if if you're if you're a sewer, you'll know what I'm talking about. Hopefully you've worked with a serger and how you change your serger thread. Um, you kind of cut it at the back, tie a knot, and then pull it through. And I do the same thing with my with my long arm threads. I go to the back of the machine where my thread is, you know, cut or break the old thread, tie the new thread on. I like to use kind of like a double knot type thing, uh, tie the two ends together and take the thread out of the needle and then start pulling. And it goes through all the, you know, little yeah. doodads and stuff and everything. Um, pull it through, cut it, rethread it, and you're good to go. And it takes maybe 30 seconds it probably takes longer to walk from the front of the machine to the back of the machine than it does to thread the, <laughs> thread the machine that way and when if you're changing the thread a lot that's probably about the only way that you can do it efficiently and 